I'm Kim Sharkey. I live in County Donegal and I'm an artist. I've got a few sides to my work and um, between it all I, I make a living and it's a joy to be able to say that. I was always into art in a way that it, I didn't realise when I was very young. I um, had all my dolls and I dressed them up in toilet roll, make my own costumes for them. I wouldn't have realised until I was older, oh yeah, that was my creative outlet finding its way. Six of us in our family, if Dad was alone with any of us, he was telling us um, poetry and um, old tales and I just, I loved it. It was like he could create magic in the room. He, he told us all the big myths, you know, like Oshin and, and everything, but there was ones that were more folklore and folklore I, I'd be really passionate about because it slowly became aware, it's so integrated into the space that people live. He gave me this book, uh, it was one of his school books, and it was the only school book he had. My auntie gave it to him. There's a lot of really well-known old um, Irish poetry in here. So, so between this and the folklore, it's really, uh, that has come from my dad. It's amazing how it's woven into, uh, then through all my work. My husband's a historian and one of his good friends, uh, he's published a few books, Brendan McSivan, yeah, he got in contact and he said he'd seen my work online and, and said, would Kim illustrate this tale? And he sent it in Irish to, to Jimmy. The excitement of the rhythm of this uh, rhyme was really lovely. Straight away, I was taken to childhood thinking about two cousins going down to the beach collecting shells and there's a big cousin who's been landed with the wee cousin, <laughs> you know. This is some early sketchbook work. Um, I was just playing around with the names. The, the very first characters, I, I wanted more August Mulk. I was thinking about big characters. So you can see that's very early, but I, I quickly went on from there. We had a wonderful launch and a lot of support from family and friends of everybody involved in the book and the uh, publisher got in contact and said that Mauro Gusmulk had been shortlisted for the Children's Book Ireland Award. So then when it came to uh, the actual awards uh, ceremony and finding out that I'd won and the Ailish Dillon Award for the, uh, illustrating my first children's book was just amazing, so excited still excited <laughs> yeah. and uh, um, that, that opened doors. I, I got to work with Owen McLaughlin and the writer who did While We Can't Hug. I've worked for 20 years in the arts and every project you do is rewarding in its own way but it, it has been exciting to receive the Eilish Dillon Award from our August Milk. <laughs> oh, good girl. Can you do it? So this is the boat strand in Carrickfin and it's my space to come to, to be away from the studio. It's, it's the main spot I come to. I find that a lot of my work's inspired by the sea and especially when I'm beginning new projects. I love coming down. Usually I'd come with Rosie and Jimmy for a walk. Coming down here and just walking helps loosen up ideas and bring things together. So, well, there's been all sorts um, <laughs> created from here, even from directly sitting and painting the seaweed or, or taking lots of photographs and films. So I gather just by viewing and there it's stored, but I gather with my phone so much and my phone's constantly full <laughs> of um, images. But it's really the viewing of it in person that, that affects you, I think, and that you want to carry into all the work. And it's um, by taking pictures, um, it's just a little way of recording it. And then taking them into sketching for developing your own ideas. I also do education, a lot of arts education, which I love, I've done it for the last 20 years. This year I'm working for the ARC and this is um, a project I've been developing to do with cave painting. I came across 
that an article about how the alphabet uh, was developed. People are writing papers these days that are saying um, people were in there with drums and almost the earliest form of animation. You were watching these shadows <laughs> cast against the walls of the uh, beautiful early, earliest art, really. It's really about the modality of bringing together um, images and sound and creating our language as humans. And I found that so exciting that it began with art. So this is what I'm doing at the moment. It's both a project in clay that I'm going to do personally and um, a project in print. So I've got oil paint here and I've cut out nice simple shapes because if you think of the, the cave paintings, they, they use nice simple animal shapes. I'm using my, my fingers first of all to kind of smudge around the, the edge because I want, I want to drag some of the oil in to create a bit of texture. I, I honestly find uh, children's work so inspiring because especially at a younger age um, they've got more creativity than we have because creativity is about letting go and letting ideas pour in and experimenting you know and cutting up pieces of paper and smudging you know and one wee boy he flattened a lake against the side of a mountain and that directly influenced the cover of <laughs> the book that I did um, for Morocco Smoke and I think children just have such freedom that they, they are so inspiring to work with. I heard there was an animation degree here and uh, I thought I leapt at the chance. So it's just about experimenting with digital. So what really excites me is taking hand-drawn or hand-made um, aspects and putting them onto uh, a digital format and being able to play with it in there. Now I think it's one of the best things that I ever did. It really feels like a culmination of skills because you can put a piece of clay onto a screen and make it, in, you know, put it as part of a, a, an animated piece. I think there's an authenticity in the handcrafted or the handmade or it gives it texture. This was the very first sample of uh, taking ceramic into a digital uh, format in animation. So I made a ceramic sculpture um, tied with the Queen of Loneliness story, Banrin the Udnes, and it's actually uh, the lake that we passed on the way down to the beach. That was a model made. On the riddle. Um, and uh, I took photographs of her and um, then was able to animate it from different angles. It's been a while since I've heard that, so that's my dad's story. You can see this is the most recent work I've been um, just finished last week putting together artwork for. So this is um, the new cover that uh, I've just finished doing artwork for last week. So it's uh, Davina Nick Kennedy's book, um, Teresa. The whole process is, is interesting um, to be able to work out. So it's, it's never about, okay, I'm gonna do this image and put it on a page in a, a book. There's so much to go through. Like I was, I was testing, would an image stand alone on, on its own better or should we do an attaching line? I had over 40 pictures and um, so I, I got texture in the sand because that was my initial idea and then just as I was walking I was thinking about the hair. So that's the wisps of hair that you, you saw on the beach and there's, there's actually water from pictures I took down on the beach as well here in the doorway, reflections of water. When you're experimenting you're allowing yourself the adventure you need to be inventing as you're going. You know, and I think that's what art is as well, is adventuring. It can be anything, and that's the jo joy of it for, for uh, when you're creating. For everybody when they create, they, we're subconsciously doing that. You're gathering inspiration, pouring it onto a sheet, and then working from there to develop your own ideas.